Hi, I'm Life Coach Landry, and the topic is the eight C's of a healthy relationship. So I'm going to employ uh, these simple ideas for you that I have uh, written down, that I've gone over and researched a little bit, that I think really kind of just, um, you know, they give you some simple things to follow. You know, I've got some clients that have written me. I got an email here that says, uh, Hi, Coach Landry. Thanks for your great videos. I watch your channel weekly. Uh, one of the things I'm struggling with in my relationship is I uh, I recently got into a relationship that I've been in for about four months, and some things, some weeks are really great, and other weeks we seem to fight a lot for no apparent reason. And there's no one really to blame. It just seems to happen. How do I know if this is healthy or not healthy? So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna advise you on on this kind of thing is, you know. Although I'm going to go over eight things I think you need to look for, if you're getting about five of them, you're doing pretty good. Um, I would say 80% of anything is a successful rate, right? You know, couples, no matter how good you are, what's going on, you're going to fight. There's just no way around it. But fighting can be very constructive for a relationship if um, you take the time to really know what you're fighting about and you're not having repeated arguments. It's repeat arguments that usually equal something bad. It means there's something toxic not being solved. And that you two aren't effective in resolving that. And that's why it keeps happening. So I'm going to go over eight things. So number one is going to be care. So showing your partner that you care is as simple as opening the door, cooking a meal. Uh, but you also have to you know, verbalize um, it in some kind of way, right? I mean, actions are nice and words are nice. But think about when you put them together, how, how much stronger what you're trying to get across really does for somebody, right? So um, some people will never say the three little words, I love you. And that's hard on some partners, right? Because they need that. You know, they come from a world where I love you is very important to them. Maybe you come from a world where I love you is not commonly spoken. So you're just in that mode of, well, whether I hear it or not, my day's not broken. Um, and remember, there's a good book out there, Five Languages of Love. I tell everybody you should read that at least once. Everybody has something that they value more than the other four that really equal love to them. For me, it's time. If I spend quality time with somebody, I don't need special I love yous. They don't need to buy me a present. They don't need to tell me I'm the best guy in the world. Time tells me you're with me and you could be with somebody else, but you're choosing to spend that with me. So that's my value. Other people sometimes need appreciation. You did a really good job. The pat on the back constantly kind of thing, kind of syndrome. But, um, you know, you can create random acts of kindness. You can put words, actions, and thoughts all together in one, one kind of core uh, segment, which is going to lead me to the next C, which is going to be consideration and respect are a pretty big deal to people. You know, some may think of it as, um, I, I would say, kind of care on steroids kind of thing. Being considerate means that you go out of your way um, to make the other person feel like he or she um, is loved and... Uh, you know, just remember that your actions are always going to be louder than your words. So it's thoughts, words, actions. Actions should always be a priority with somebody, um, which is why I value time because time is an action. It's a constant action. You're with me. You didn't have to be. You could be anywhere else. You're constantly showing me an action of you want to be with me. Words are secondary to me, and, and I think they should be to most people. Words are an in-between. They lubricate the thought and the action together, right? So kind of look at things kind of like that, right? So consideration is a big deal. I consider consideration also a respect mechanism. So consideration slash respect. Okay, the third C is going to be communication. A willingness and desire for communication is paramount to any successful relationship. Truly, it's the most important thing. You know, given that we have so many ways we can communicate in our world now with all kinds of media and whatnot, there's no excuse um, for not talking it out with your partner in any form. You can send a picture, text, Instagram. I mean, you can do anything now to show any kind of uh, communication. So when you don't, you're sending the signal that something is wrong or that you're busy and it's just not a part of your routine or priority. And that's okay, depending on if you're at work or what's going on. But, you know, somewhere in there, uh, you need to communicate. You know, voices are better than text. Actions are better than voices. Um so if, you, uh, if you're tweaked about something, you know, like I would say, quit pussyfooting around, get your ass to the table, get it solved so that you two can go back to being healthy and moving forward. Anytime, remember, anytime you have something that's going on in your relationship that's not working out, what you're doing is you're putting relationship on pause. That's all it does. It just pauses your relationship. Now, 
my fundamentals about that is you probably heard my podcast and my other videos is that at some point you need to tackle that. So get to the table, knock it out. One to three conversations max. If you're repeating it, then you have an incompatibility. So you have to make a decision. Do I just let it go? Or does that mean enough where I need to walk away? You can't punish people forever for something they've done, but you can make a choice whether you need to tell them I need to talk further or, you know, it's pretty good. Or, you know what, it bothered me a lot then. I've kind of slowly moved past it. Or it bothered me a lot then, but other actions you've done have made me let go of that. Okay? The next one's going to be compromise. An ability to reach a compromise um, is such a valuable tool, right? Because it really shows the health of your relationship if you have compromising principles to each other. Right, so a lot of people sit down at the table and they just want to, you know, they'll want a diarrhea out of their mouth about what's going on. A healthy relationship, the person will vent and then they'll both say, "So what do we want to do about this?" And then they'll start talking about the solutions and not just saying, "I want to keep telling you everything that sucks." No one wants to be with a drama queen. Drama, drama people are people who constantly want to focus on what's wrong and they want to keep rehearsing it because they're not. They want to keep flushing, and then unfortunately. Your partner is not the person that you want to keep venting to. Your partner is the person you want to say it to one to three times max, and then you want to solve it. If you don't want to solve it, you're telling them you want out, or you're just not happy in general, uh, which takes away from you trying to make a point with just one argument. So compromise is important. So that leads you to the next one. The next C is going to be confidence, okay? We need to know um, that our relationship is safe and that our partner loves us, so that when you fight, you know nobody's running for the fences, that they're out, Oh, this is the fight that broke it. Usually you send that signal, like I said, by putting the relationship on pause and just saying nothing. That usually equals you're actually just not happy. You don't have confidence in your relationship. You know, it's in the human DNA um, to want a sense of belonging. It's biologically built into us. It's why we seek other mates, not just for sexual pleasure and whatnot, but for comfort, for company, for companionship. It's built in. There's nothing to do about it. If you're not making somebody feel like they belong in the relationship with you, you can't grow and prosper. Okay, Someone has to have a sense of belonging to grow and prosper. Um, your desire will always be elusive if you're like that, right? So threatening your relationship um, when you're having an argument uh, is unfair, right? It's not the way to argue, and it shows disdain. It shows resentment. It shows passive aggressive. It shows drama. My advice to you is if you've got somebody you're working like that, and that's how it's kind of going, get the fuck out. People like that are bullshit. They're a waste of your time, and they're going to do it with the next person too. I guarantee it. Get out. Get with someone more compatible. Get away from that shit. Next C is comfort. Um, it's easy uh, when you think about it, to make your partner feel uncomfortable, right? I mean, you're the person that can get under the skin. You're the person that can, you know, jilt their nerves one way or the other. And sometimes we do it unknowingly. Um, and if you're a little upset, uh, you know, you can carry that around with you and be real, like I said, like passive aggressive about it. You need to be real careful about that kind of thing. You don't want to do that kind of stuff. You want to make sure, you know, that you're, you know, even when you're fighting, there's a sense of comfort in there that they don't feel like you're going to raise your tone and get radical. You know, if someone's non dramatic and they're very reasonable and very rational, and they date someone who's very drama, or let's say they're good 99% of the time, but that 1% they're loud and, and crazy and it makes the person feel threatened, that 1% may be a strong enough 1% to make them back off of you. Because when you love somebody and you're with them, there should be a comfort zone of when they talk to you about any subject, even sensitive ones, you do not get uppity and start crying and yelling and raising your tone like crazy. That creates discomfort, right? We all have those moments where they happen, but it can't be something that's ongoing. You, you just destroy comfort, okay? Remember, it, time's too precious to, to be wasted feeling bad about people um, or yourself, so because your other half is mad at you, and remember when you're with someone, they're your other half, so half of you is mad. There's nothing good that comes with that. Solve it. Quit fucking around. Solve it. Like, what are you waiting for? Are you waiting for Jesus to come back? Are you waiting for Moses part of the Red Sea? What are you waiting for? Get to the table. Call them today, whether you did the right, whether you did the wrong. Text them. Call them. Voicemail them. Instagram them. Facebook them. You have no excuse. Communicate. Get it worked out. Okay? The next one is cherishing. This is a big deal. Right to feel cherished, um, that you're the most important person in their life, and you are in theirs. Right, that'll keep the two of you close no matter what's going on, as long as they have a sense of cherishment, because you are valued and validated by each other. Um, 
it's one of those things where it just it creates a tremendous amount of strength. It's almost like a tornado of strength. It it, it just it's gonna rip through any argument you have because it's so strong and has so much internally in it. And that's what you want. You really it's kind of like working out. You want your core to become really strong in your relationship by cherishing each other. They can feel that even when you're not saying anything. When you cherish someone, they get that sense of this person really really cares about me. This person really values me on a daily basis. This isn't just a when sex is good, when our, everything is perfect or anything. Cherish is an overall sentiment that somebody feels. But I think me personally, the most important one besides how you resolve your issues with each other is um cheerleading right be each other's biggest cheerleader if you're one of those people that you don't take compliments well so you don't give compliments well change it you can't be with another human being if they can't feel that you cherish them and you're cheerleading them in some way you know if you're one of those people i mean and i'm looking at you right now if you're one of those people that when they give you a compliment you just go oh thank you like you're real like oh, i don't know. quit being fucking stupid right Go, oh my God, thank you. Like, I love that you told me that. That makes me feel good. You know, and when you're walking around, be like, oh, God, you dress so sharp. You're so handsome. If it's a woman, oh man, that you know what? That color is beautiful on you. I love when you wear that color, you know? And I'm not saying fake these things. When you feel them, say them, you know? Your man or your woman will be engulfed when they're around other people and they hear other women or other men complain about their relationship. Like, my, my woman, my man picks me up. They make me, they're my biggest fan. If I was a football player, a track star, um, if I was at a fashion show, they are in the crowd, they are cheering me on more than anybody else ever would. No matter who loves me, who's obsessed with me, that person has my best interest and is always willing to put themselves on the line to help me better myself, right? So, you know, it's it's one of those, you know, have a good cheerleader, a yell king by your side, whatever it is, um, you know, get back on your feet. You know, life is easier when your partner lifts you up, right? It's just, it's going to be easier. Um, you know, and I, you know, that's, that's pretty much the eight C's. Um, you know, if any of these qualities are missing from your relationship, you know, uh, work on adding, uh, restoring or employing them, whatever it is you got to do. Um, and I got, a, I got a good feeling that if you do you start to pay attention to these things, uh, like the, the, the client that wrote me a, an email, um, like I said, for you, if you're watching this video, um, I think you should go through these eight things. You know, I'm going to recap them. Care, consideration, communication, compromise, confidence, comfort, cherish, and cheerleading. Cheerleading, are, it's just to me, it's the most important one. If somebody knows that you're their fan, they're never going to think, even during the worst of fights, um, that you don't have their best interests at heart. So, you know, find that pretty important. So take these eight things. See if you have a couple of them. Like I said, if you have 80%, you're doing pretty good. Um, run with your 80%. Don't sit there and knock your relationship when you got a couple of things going like that. Um, so if this information was helpful and you want to book a personal session, contact me at the email link below. And if you found this information of value, click on the PayPal uh, link below and I will talk to you soon.